Hey friends, Corey here. In this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about working with aluminum extrusion, also known as 8020. We did all of our cabinetry in our DIY cargo trailer conversion build with this stuff, and it was a pretty big learning curve, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, pretty challenging to use, but I ended up really getting the hang of it, and uh, I learned a lot, and I figured I should pass along some of that knowledge because I couldn't find anything else online that was similar to this. So let's dive in. Okay, so aluminum extrusion, also known as 8020. Now, 8020 is the manufacturer. Uh, you can find it on their website at 8020.net. Um, they have lots of really good information about what this stuff actually is, but let me show you. All right, so 8020 is aluminum extrusion, and it's this piece of metal um, that has these like grooves and stuff in it. You can kind of see the profile, what exactly it is right but it has these slots in it and inside these slots fit little attachments and pieces such as this little uh, piece of angle that I have here you can kind of see that um, the uh, little angles fit on top of the, uh, of the aluminum and it fits in the little groove right so you can bolt these things together and uh, do lots of different projects with them um, they kind of advertise it as like the adult erector set I'm going to tell you everything that I learned about this stuff because it's a little tricky um, to kind of get your head wrapped around all of it. Why would you build your cabinets with aluminum extrusion? So in our case, we had several reasons for doing this. First of all, um, like I said, aluminum is really light. Um, it's much lighter than wood is actually, which seems kind of counterintuitive that a metal would be lighter than a wood, but it is. It's lighter than wood. Um, also, right now, um, you know, I would say that it's more expensive to work with, but the price of lumber in um, kind of mid-2021 is outrageous. So this stuff actually ended up being fairly cost comparative to what lumber costs right now. So it's important to us that we keep our build as absolute light as possible because we are pulling it with a Toyota 4Runner, which has a 5,000 pound tow capacity. So I tried to make a conscious effort to cut weight wherever I possibly can. And one way that you can do that, that a lot of people complain about, is the heaviness, the weight of wood, right? So by framing an aluminum extrusion, I can skip a lot of sides and panels of the cabinetry, right? I don't need a back, I don't need sides. I just have this thing I need the front face on and a few sides here and there, but it allows you to sort of build um, all your cabinetry and skip some of the heavier pieces, right? Now in the end, is this actually gonna be that much lighter than a wooden cabinet? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to say. I'm not really sure yet. I mean, this stuff is, it does have weight to it and it's gonna be heavy and I'm still putting my cabinet faces on, right? So maybe I'm not actually saving that much weight. So I guess in my case, I'm really just getting it um, for all of the uh, sturdiness, right? You know, the last thing I'll mention too is building with wood, building wooden cabinets is an enormous project, right? It is not something that's very easy to do. I mean, it takes a ton of woodworking. You have to get all of your cuts exactly right, and it's really challenging. And just cutting the pieces that we did, we found it to be pretty challenging just to uh, cut like the sides and the, and the doors and those types of things. That was hard enough as it is. I can't imagine doing the entire project in wood. Now, one of the things that was hardest to wrap my head around is like the different sizes of this stuff because it, it's kind of tricky to figure it all out. Um, they're all named different types of series, right? So you have like 10 series and 20 series and 30 series. And what does all that mean? You know, I really thought I had it uh, down at initially and then I learned a little bit more and it totally blew my mind. So let's talk about what the different series are. So on the 8020 website, now, um, even if you don't buy your aluminum extrusion from 8020, the 8020 website has a ton of really helpful information on it, right? So you can play with the different dimensions and see what different sizes are, and it's just a really awesome uh, website that's got lots of helpful information on it. So I highly recommend jumping over there and playing around a little bit. Um, but if you look on the 8020 website, you will see all of these different sizes and shapes and um, they're different lengths and different uh, angles, and some of them have like smooth edges. Some of them have uh, like these slotted edges, right? And there's just so many options on the 8020 website. Um, it's super overwhelming at first. So let me walk you through exactly what it is. So um, the series itself, the series is the size of the um, like the the width of the aluminum itself. Now. In my hand here, in my hand here, I have uh, some 10 series. This is what I ended up building my entire trailer out of. Now, 10 series is approximately one inch across, like the size of the square is one inch by one inch. 
Um, and then here I have some 30 series aluminum, which is a little bit bigger. You can see here, now 30 series is 30 millimeters across, right? So one is in inches, one is in millimeters. How do you keep all these straight? Let me walk you through it. Now a simple little exercise is just to draw out all of the different sizes on a piece of paper so you can actually see what exactly it is. So let me walk you through some of the common sizes of 8020. So, okay, so first you have the 10 series. That's an inch across, right? So the 10 and the 15 are both standard sizes. Now the 15 series is an inch and a half across, right? So it's a little bit bigger. Then you have your metric series, the 20 series, which is 20 millimeters across, your 30 series, which is 30 millimeters across, and then your 40 series, which is 40 millimeters across. Now, there are a few other si standard sizes that this stuff comes in. There's a 45 series, which is 45 millimeters, and there's 25 series, which is 25 millimeters. But by far, I think the most common are like the 10 and the 15, which are the standard sizes, those are in inches, right? And you also have the 20 and the 40. Now the 20 and 40 are in millimeters. Now, I originally was gonna do all of my cabinetry in, in the 30 series, which is 30 millimeters, um, which maybe, maybe fortunately was out of stock when I went to buy it. I'm kind of glad that happened because it's pretty challenging actually to find parts to fit the 30 series. Now that's something that we're gonna talk about in detail is buying the different types of brackets that you need when you're building with this stuff and how hard it is actually to find some of it. So uh, just to recap, you have different series of framing, right? You have the 10 series, which is one inch, the 15 series, which is an inch and a half. Then you have the 20 series through the 45 series and all of those are in millimeters, right? So it's confusing because 10 and 15 are not in millimeters. It's not 10, mil 10 millimeters and 15 millimeters. Those are in inches. So it's a little bit confusing. Okay, so let's have a look at the 8020 website and I will show you um, just what I mean by the differences between the dimensions, right? So I'm over here on 8020.net. Note that this is the shop side of the website. Uh, there is a catalog and there's a lot of helpful information in their catalog, but I found it incredibly difficult to use. But the shop section of the website is pretty nice, right? You can search for all your different types of um, framing and that sort of thing. And all of that is under just the main site. And then I went through profiles is where I went. So let's look at the 1010, which is the, the 10 series, right? It's one inch by one inch. And let's look at the 20 series, which is 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. So when you're on the, uh, like the part page, like the, if you're going to purchase it, right? If you go to the, there's always an image of these like dimensions, right? And uh, there's lots of helpful information. In fact, actually, if you scroll down a little bit, it's probably a better place to look at it under the product details. Now you'll notice that both of these have this, right? This product details. So if you look down here, you have the sort of description of all the different dimensions of the um, profile, right? So because I'm on the uh, 10 series, right? The one inch by one inch, these dimensions are in inches, right? If you look over at the 20 series, because this is in millimeters, right? The 20 series is a metric uh, series, right? So 20 by 20, these are in um, metric, right? So this would be millimeters, okay? So that's an important thing to understand when you're looking at these dimensions. But these pictures are really helpful because when you're trying to find compatible parts like hinges and screws and all these types of things, you can reference the 8020 website to find out if they will fit, right? Because you can see how deep they are, you can see how wide the holes are. It's super helpful to have this mathematical reference when you're trying to find parts that will fit the 8020 because you have to buy a lot of this stuff online and unfortunately it's kind of hard to do that. Now I would like to note that I did all of my cabinetry in the 10 series, right? Which is the inch across. And would I consider doing it out of some of the other series? That's a good question. And I think I, I would consider at least doing the 25 or the 30 series. The 25 series is pretty close to an inch anyway, right? Um, the 30 series is more like an inch and a quarter. The 40 series is more like an inch and a half. And the 45 series is more like an inch and three quarters, right? So the 20 series, however, is definitely less than an inch. It's only 20 millimeters, which is smaller than an inch, right? And now I would have some hesitation, I think, about building my cabinetry in the 20 series. Now you could maybe talk to 8020, the manufacturer themselves, about sort of the strength. And they do have a lot of the tensile strength and stuff on the website. Um, specifically with the 20 series, it says it has a yield strength of 2.41 newtons per square millimeter. I'm just a layman. I know what newtons are, but like I can't easily convert that into like a practical, uh, a practical use, right? So I don't know if it would hold my fat butt if it was if the bench itself was made out of that. Probably, to be honest, um, and it'd definitely be a little bit cheaper to use the 20 series. So it's something to consider. 
Now, I don't really think there's much of a reason to go much bigger than the 10 series um, or the 15 series. Now, the 15 series is an inch and a half. That's pretty close to the 40 series. Um, and I'm not really sure I would go much bigger than that. I mean, this stuff is incredibly strong. I mean, this is about a 14 inch piece and there's no way I can bend this at all. Like, I mean, it is incredibly, incredibly strong. Now the longer pieces, I've even tried to bend the longer pieces and I have, I can't, I mean, I can kind of make it bow just a little bit with all my strength into it, but this stuff is so strong. It's, I mean, just the shape of it, I think is what makes it so strong, right? So you really don't need as much as you think you do. And like I said, I was originally going to go with a 30 series, which is quite a bit bigger than the 10 series I and mean, you can kind of see the size comparison here and i'm kind of glad that i didn't right this is definitely heavier and it's bigger and yes it's stronger but it's probably unnecessary to have it gone this big um, just for cabinetry so where do you actually buy this stuff now that's another really great question because there's lots of different places to buy it now you have the original 8020 site right 8020.net slash shop now i I will say that 8020 itself is by far the most expensive place to buy it. And that makes sense. I think that they're probably the inventor of this stuff. I'm not exactly sure, uh, but they're sort of the, you know, the, the, the origin folks, right? They, uh, they carry all the most parts. Everybody references them. I imagine they probably invented this stuff, okay? There's several other places you can get it, though. Um, T-Nuts is another place that you can get it. Uh, T-Nuts is another common um, aluminum extrusion sort of uh, supplier and they have lots of parts. I did get mine through T-Nut. You can also get them through Granger. If you have a local Granger, you could probably save a bunch of money on shipping um, if you could pick it up. I'm not sure if that would be the, the cheapest way to do it. You can get it from Masumi, which is I think a Japanese com uh, company, but they do have US warehouses and you can buy it from them too. Now I found uh, I found Masumi to be like the second cheapest. T-Nuts was the cheapest, but Masumi was like the second cheapest and I would consider buying from them as well. Then lastly, you have McMaster Car, which is like a really cool website if you've never played around on it. I mean, you can buy all kinds of crazy stuff from their enormous catalog, um, but you can get it from them as well. Um, so lots of different places to buy 8020 from or aluminum extrusion. Um, now, I will say this stuff is all online, right? I mean, these are all online manufacturers and uh, dealers, right? Um, you probably could buy it in person, but it's kind of hard just to run out and buy it, kind of like you do um, with wood from like the hardware store. Now, I did call a Granger, I think it was in Asheville, and they said they had it in stock and I could pick it up. So I considered doing that for a hot minute, um, but uh, I ended up just buying it all online. Now, let's talk about one other really important fact here is uh, this stuff is really hard to cut, okay? Um, because it's uh, aluminum and because of the angles and like the shape of this stuff with all of these like little grooves and things on the edges, the stuff is really, really hard to cut. And I would have a lot of hesitation to cut the stuff with a standard miter saw. Um, now I did do a little bit of cutting of just aluminum angle to kind of create my own angles. And we're gonna talk about that a little later, but I do have a little bit of experience of cutting aluminum with the miter saw and I almost cut my fingers off. Like, I mean, it's really, really dangerous. Um, the miter saws, like the blade, you need a special metal blade, first of all, with the miter saw. Um, it's just got a lot of teeth on it and it catches the aluminum funny, right? And I imagine it would definitely catch this um, really kind of badly, right? And I was just cutting some simple aluminum angle and the blade caught, it ripped the metal out of my hands and threw it like across the place where I was cutting um, and it broke the fence on my miter saw. And I have a picture of that that I can show you here where it just like totally snapped my miter saw in two. So if you're going to be cutting it yourself, there is an alternative we're gonna talk about in a second. If you're gonna be cutting it yourself, you kind of need what's called a chop saw or a metal chop, chop saw and uh, that uses a, a cutting wheel. It's like a, like a stone wheel thing, diamond coated, I don't know exactly what it is. It's like a stone wheel. If you ever use like, a, like, a, like a, an angle grinder, it's got one of those cutting wheels on it, right? And, but it looks like a miter saw, so you can chop with it. And it also has lots of clamps, so it holds metal in place. So if you're gonna actually be doing it all yourself, I would highly consider buying a chop saw, which is pretty expensive. Now, I didn't wanna do that. Now, the better alternative is if you do a really good job of designing this stuff in a 3D software, kind of like Google SketchUp, 
Um, instead of cutting it all yourself, you can have the dealer or the manufacturer actually cut it for you. Now, um, I did this, I had a fantastic result because I put so much work into my design, but they will cut it within like a hundredth of the measurement that you give them, right? So they use like laser cutting tools and stuff to make that happen. So it's much easier to let someone else cut this stuff for you than to have to buy special tools and all that kind of thing. Um, and I would highly recommend doing that. That's what we did and it worked really well. So as I was editing this video, I kind of figured out that I kind of had way too much footage to put it all in a single video. So this is going to conclude the first part of our series on aluminum extrusion. And so far we've covered everything that uh, I learned about dealing with the profiles, right? Uh, the next thing that we need to cover is all the different fasteners and how to save some money doing that. And we're going to do all that in part two of our series on aluminum extrusion. So this is going to conclude this one. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, be sure to uh, hit the like on this video and subscribe to the channel and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one.